Hello, thank you for joining this week's Tips and Tricks webinar, our continuing series on how to run your checkpoint environment more efficiently. Uh, today's topic is on Checkpoint Horizon XDR XPR. Please remember to use the Q&A chat if you have any questions during the webinar, we'll make sure we get to those. Uh, today, our presenter is a product, incubi yeah, product incubation manager from Georgia, Chris Morris. Chris, what do you have for us today? Uh. Thanks for the intro. Uh, yeah, my name is Chris Morris. Uh, I'm a product incubation manager, which is just a fancy title for a uh, product specialist. And so, yeah, I cover uh, Horizon XDR XPR uh, for Checkpoint. Uh, I cover the Americas. And I was going to talk to you today about uh, our product, kind of give you a 50,000 foot overview on it uh, and introduce you to the product. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with the product or the concept. Uh, but really, the idea here is to have additional layers of defense in your environment. Uh, a good secure environment is going to consist of a uh, multiple overlapping layer strategy uh, where you're not dependent upon just one uh, layer of security. Uh, you probably already have that with your firewall and uh, your endpoint. But the thing out there is that no vendor, including Checkpoint, is 100% effective 100% of the time. Uh, we're all run by humans, which means we are capable of making some mistakes. Uh, with Checkpoint, it happens the least. We've got the best uh, prevention and detection scores out there of any vendor. However, it's still not 100% 100% of the time. Uh, so how you respond to that is very important. Uh, having additional layers of defense so that in the event, the unlikely event, that something does get through those initial uh, layers of security, you still have something left in reserve. Uh, you have something monitoring the environment. And that's where XPR comes into play. Being able to monitor your environment, in our case, from the standpoint of uh, your firewall, your endpoint, and uh, currently email and collaboration, we're gonna be adding more products as time goes on, and I'll touch on that. But uh, by uh, examining the telemetry and the logs coming from those environments, we can uh, use artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, heuristic behavior analysis to uncover stealthy attacks, to uh, eliminate false positives, and make your investigations more accurate and more timely. So, you know, in the event that something does get through, you can stop a, uh, a simple infection or an intrusion from turning into a full-scale breach uh, in your environment. Now, uh, just touching on uh, the product and you know, how this plays into uh, you know, the set of tools that you would use every day. Uh, first off, we're gonna start off here uh, talking about it at the three o'clock position at Detect. So, let's say that something does get past uh, those initial layers. We're looking for those telltale signs. We're looking for uh, anomalous behavior, things that can uh, tip you off that something's not quite right. Um, you know, most people do have, you know, some detection capabilities. Uh, you know, you've got certain reports that you run every day. You've got alerts that will tell you if somebody hits a, you know, command and control center, you know, in Russia or something, I'm just going to pick on them today. Uh, you know, really those kind of capabilities fall into two buckets. You've got log correlation and anomaly detection. Now, log correlation, uh, that works great if you already know what you're looking for. Uh, anomaly detection works great when you don't know what you're looking for. But the trouble with both of those is that they don't really fit the bill 100% either one of them. Uh, you know, with anomaly detection, the main drawback there is the false positive rate. Uh, it can be really high, and that can be a, a real quick non-starter whenever you're dealing with a security situation because it ends up making you waste time on uh, tracking down uh, things that really don't need your attention while the things that do need your attention are left, uh, you know, for a while whenever you get to them. But anyway, though, uh, having, uh, you know, all of this telemetry come in, you know, we're going to very soon be supporting CloudGuard, but we already support uh, Quantum. So any of your uh, on-prem or cloud gateways, we support uh, Harmony Endpoint and Harmony Email and Collaboration. Uh, very shortly, we're going to be introducing support for Microsoft Windows Defender and uh, support for uh, Azure AD. 
so all of that's really exciting with more products to join later. Now, one of the other key uh, features of the product is the ability to perform investigations. We're going to bring together all of the tools that you need to perform those investigations, uh, again, enabling you to respond more quickly uh, to those threats that may be present in your environment, giving you what you need uh, at your fingertips to uh, take a look at that, find out, is this something that I need to deal with? Do I need to go and, uh, you know, unhook a computer from the network? I'm just, you know, spitballing here. Uh, you know, whatever it is you need to do. Do I need to update my, uh, you know, security policy? You know, do I maybe have something not optimally set in my endpoint policy, something like that? And that's where it brings us into that respond uh, phase, being able to respond to uh, those threats, take the appropriate action. And now what's key and what often uh, separates Checkpoint from its competition is the ability to actually perform prevention. So by analyzing that telemetry, uh, looking at what's present and uh, evaluating it, we're able to give a severity score and a confidence score. And then based upon a threshold that you, the administrator set, we can automatically enable certain indicators of compromise uh, so that your devices, whether it's you know your hardware firewalls, uh, virtual firewalls, endpoints, whatever, can respond automatically and start blocking access from that resource. It might be a domain name, an IP address. It could be a file hash to make sure nobody else downloads uh, this file, uh, something of that nature. Uh, now, some of these I've already touched on here, uh, being able to perform that prevention and detection across the network. I like to rewrite that because I always like to talk prevention first. I touched on the behavioral analytics, uh, you know, the AI based detection. You know, we're using the power of threat cloud here uh, in order to uh, do all of that analysis. And because we're doing it with threat cloud, we're able to also leverage data that we obtain from other checkpoint customers so that everybody together is more secure than any one of us would be on our own. Uh, we do provide some uh, incident triage and prioritization capabilities in there. We essentially give you a punch list uh, so that you know uh, right off the bat, whenever you come in in the morning, for example, you've got a list of what needs your attention right now. You know, Some of those might be able to wait till closer to lunchtime, and then there might be some that you'd better take care of before you have that second cup of coffee. Uh, there, are, there is some uh, incident management capabilities in there so that you can have other members of your team uh, uh, work on an issue. Uh, we do map everything back to MITRE, uh, which has pretty much become an industry standard. We provide threat hunting uh, capabilities. So those of you that are familiar with our endpoint product uh, will already be familiar with that. We're also going to be taking that capability and extending it to firewalls and uh, our email and collaboration product, as well as other products. I already touched on the investigation tool. Uh, I'll get into the IOC management, which is really cool. That one bullet point right there is worth uh, the price of uh, the product, in my humble opinion, right there. Um, touched on the third-party integrations. Uh, you know, um, that's about it on uh, the main capabilities. Um, hey, Chris, I'm sorry. Uh, I had a question. I think it was on your oh, last yeah, slide. Um, you mentioned Defender. The question was the free version with Windows or Defender for Endpoint, where you're referencing? Uh, it should be either one, but it is for the Endpoint. It, we're ne I want to make sure that uh, I'm differentiating that from uh, Endpoint for, you know, 0365 uh, or something like that. So it's, it's just the Endpoint. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Seems I've already touched on this a little bit here. So automating the actions, uh, that ties back to that indicator of compromise piece that I talked about, uh, being able to mitigate that threat, stop any further damage. You know, if you, you know, for instance, are noticing uh, communication from uh, some part of the world that you normally don't work with, uh, by looking at that and noticing the anomaly, and if you set the threshold appropriately, it can respond automatically and stop those communications. It, it kills off uh, the communication link that that hacker had with your network. Uh, and then being able to enforce that across your entire environment. Uh, quick view of the dashboard. I'm gonna actually get into it here. Um, let's see. Some of the things that uh, we're able to uncover that I like to go over here, 
uh, you know, these are things that really uh, set out, uh, you know, uh, XPR from other tools of this nature. You know, we're looking at things like, you know, RDPing into a server with valid credentials. Uh, you know, we've got network scanners, lateral movement, uh, you know, creation of a, a backup, uh, scheduled tests. All of these things here, what they have in common is there's nothing malicious in and of themselves. And because of that, they're not going to show up on any normal report that you may have written. Sure, maybe you, you wrote a report that uh, uh, would tell you all of that stuff or alert you uh, to that. But that too, you can see easily where that's going to be subject to a lot of false positives. You know, we're using the power of AI to be able to, uh, you know, digest all of that and tell you, uh, no, th this here, we've noticed a couple of these things, something isn't right here. Uh, so just a quick summary here before I actually take us to the dashboard, uh, the AI-based correlations, uh, we'll get more into the, the automatic prevention responses, the investigation, uh, fast onboarding. If it takes more than 10 minutes to set this up, something went horribly wrong. And all of these together are going to improve your security posture so that you have yet another layer of defense uh, for your environment to make sure that, you know, you're not the next uh, name that's crawling across the bottom of CNN or Fox News as a breach. So let me switch over to our dashboard. Okay, here, here is our uh, demonstration tenant. Uh, those of you on the call that are with Checkpoint, you've probably seen or used this before. I like using this because it, it does give us a number of uh, good examples of what uh, a threat in your environment might look like on this dashboard. But whenever you log in, this is what you're gonna see right off the bat. And here almost dead center is uh, what I talked about, that punch list. It's color-coded. You can see here it's uh, more of a red color. This would be something that you need to take care of immediately. We see here that there are assets involved. We've got a user, Jason Taylor, and here we've got an indicator. It looks like a file came in in this case uh, because we have a file hash. I can click on this, uh, drill in farther. Uh, you can see where if this was appropriate to map back to MITRE, uh, we'd see that up at the top. Uh, affected assets. We're giving you a lot of information here so uh, that you're not having to go across a number of different dashboards in order to pull this information together. We've already pulled it together for you. And come down here to incidents. Let me kick that out to last month or so that we see these. Uh, we do have the ability to assign this uh, to a user and then we can uh, uh, you know, assign a uh, disposition to it. You know, has it been handled? Was it a false positive? What have you? I'm going to skip down here and uh, look at events for a moment. We're going to give you all of the events here. We're going to save you from having to go across different products in order to look at the different events. So if you want to say, you know, maybe you've got an IP address, you know, that was you're alerted to, you can search for it in here and you can see all of the raw logs for that. Uh, just like Standard checkpoint smart event. You can search for really anything. You can, uh, you know, drill in here by filtering uh, the results. Uh, works just like you would expect. Now, one of the cool things here that I like to touch on is that investigation tool. Uh, it's the intelligence tab here in the product. Uh, it looks rather simple, and that is part of its power, is that it is very simple to use. It's essentially like a Google search. I hate using a third-party uh, product to describe ours, but the term has become ubiquitous around the world. With this, you can put in there pretty much anything, uh, IP address, domain name, URL, hash, whatever, and you're basically saying to Checkpoint Threat Cloud, tell me everything that you've got on this. Uh, and we'll come up with a result. What you also have, and I, I wish they'd uh, draw more attention to this here, the analyze the file. This is access to the checkpoint sandblast threat emulation network of uh, servers. So with this, you're able to upload a file. Let's say you've had a you've got a suspect file, you were working on a computer over in finance and you noticed a file in the sys32 directory that you're like, wait, wait a minute, that's not part of my gold image. Where did that thing come from? 
well, upload it. See, uh, see what we know about it. We'll take that file, you know, if you're not familiar with the process, we'll take that file, we'll pop it into a cloud VM, double click on it and see what happens. And if there is anything malicious observed, we're going to give you a threat emulation report on that. Give you an example in here. You know, here the example is uh, an Excel file. You know, um, you know the videos have been removed here, but we actually include a time lapse video so that you know if you opened up an Excel file and you saw a PowerShell open up, that's a pretty good indicator that something's not right here. Uh, and you can also upload it from a URL. So you know we're not exposing you if if you had a suspicious download, but you want to take a look at it. Maybe uh, your endpoint blocked it, but you want to look anyway. Someone saying, but I, I swear that that's a good file. Well, before you open that up for the user, you know, best take a look at it. You can have Checkpoint download that directly. But let's take a look at an example here to show you what some of the capabilities are. All of those, those three across the bottom there, all of those are examples that we provide. So you can do essentially what we're doing here. Uh, you see, there's a lot of information in here that we pull up. You know, first off, we're going to do is if it's a domain or a, an IP address, we're going to uh, go out there with a cloud browser and pull a screenshot of uh, uh, that landing page if there's a web server sitting out there. Now, in this case, it's 404 not found. Looks like the uh, domain owner or the IP address owner has already dealt with this threat. Uh, because that web server isn't serving up anything other than, you know, that not found. But here we pulled the who is information, related URLs, and all of these are indicators that you can search other products with. You can see if uh, uh, the telltale signs are anywhere else, trigger checkpoint protections. Uh, you've got the traffic analysis, pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, events in the wild. So, and this is across all checkpoint customers. You're getting to see, you know, how prevalent it is, uh, you know, across around the world, top industries where we're seeing that. Uh, over on the right, uh, open source intelligence. Uh, if checkpoint research had anything written up about it, you'd find it on that tab. We've got a couple of tweets. We've already pulled those up. Same thing with Google. Uh, we're going to go out there, do a Google search, and remove all of the fluff and just give you the good stuff. And we even have third-party references out there. You can see that Alien Vault has a number of articles available that you could click on. Uh, we also have a hot link to Virus Total. You can click on that, and you can see, you know, what does the industry at large think about this? Now we've got a few that are still reporting this as uh, malicious, but it does look like, uh, by and large, most of the players out there are reporting this as clean, and that does, you know. Uh, you know, work into what my suspicions are that, you know, the owner has already dealt with that threat. It's been uh, uh, resolved. Uh, if this were something found in my environment, I could pretty reasonably uh, move on if this was all the information I had. You know, maybe if it was a laptop that, you know, was on a, a desk somewhere that was a loner laptop, it hadn't been booted up for a while. I might uh, think that there's a dormant threat on there that, you know, was trying to report back to a command and control, but couldn't do it anymore. I might take the action of reformatting, you know, that machine, uh, deploying a new image to it. Uh, let's see here, threat hunting. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, th because this is more of an endpoint uh, product. And uh, just to reiterate what I said earlier, we will be uh, enriching this with uh, data from other uh uh, points of ingestion, so firewalls, email and collaboration, third-party products. I'm not sure why this is taking so long to load. I hope my internet connection is not flaking out on me. Well, we can hear you, so we can't blame that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we'll come back to that one. Uh, what I really wanted to hit on, though, was the IOC management capabilities. Uh, Oh, uh, got a quick question here. Yes, it is being recorded. Uh, you'll be able to catch this later. Now, what we're doing here with these indicators of compromise is that as we examine all of that telemetry uh, coming uh, to and from your environment, we're able to harvest certain indicators. Now, in this case here, because it's a demo portal, you know, you can see that all of these are file hashes. It could be an IP address. It could be a domain name, various different indicators. But with this, we are evaluating it, and then we are assigning a confidence level to it. You know, how sure is Checkpoint about this 
uh, being a real threat and then assigning a severity to it. You know, okay, so how important is this? Is this something that's really gonna hose my environment or is this something of a, a less severe nature? But uh, accordingly, we're gonna either enable or disable that, but how do you use this? Well, that's where these show feed URLs come in. Now, if you're using uh, a checkpoint uh, security gateway that is R81 and above, all of this uh, capability is going to be built right into Smart Console. If you're using R80.20.30 or .40, you can do this from the command line. But you can make this part of your uh, uh, security policy. And those gateways, those firewalls, will go out automatically every five minutes and refresh this data. Uh, we do have a new IOC management uh, feature that is going to be coming live here in the next uh, several weeks that adds the capability of uh, automatically publishing these IOCs to endpoint and uh, email and collaboration. Uh, incidentally, you can use this with other third-party products. The, these uh, URLs are unique to each tenant, uh, and you can regenerate them as needed, but uh, you know, we don't provide formal support on that, but that doesn't mean they can't be used. Uh, so if you've got another product that's able to ingest a CSV file uh, for IOCs, you can use this with those. We do know of a number of customers that are using it in that way. And, you know, that's great for these indicators, but you know what, I really need this to be more automated. And like we said during the slide presentation, we do have those prevention capabilities and here's how you access them is through the policy. Let our policy load up here. Okay, so with this here, I'm able to enable this and mark prevent and detect on, and then I can assign a confidence score and a severity score that says if it's this level or above, you know what, don't wait on me, the human, go ahead and enable that and those products will uh, automatically get updated with those indicators. There's no uh, human intervention necessary. Now, you can already see some of the power of that by thinking, you know, oh, that's great. If this happens at two o'clock in the morning, whenever I'm asleep or everyone's on uh, Christmas break or something like that, it's great that it'll respond automatically. But uh, I like to go a step further by highlighting that a number of our customers out there you can't just make a policy change on the fly. You know, if you were going to do this in other manners, you know, like if you were just going to play whack-a-mole and block IP addresses from uh, your access control policy, I mean, you can certainly do that. Uh, the product capabilities are there. But if you're going to do a policy push, you end up having to wait for a maintenance window. You have to do it off business hours. You've got to get a management sign off, all kinds of things that stand in your way. And if you're dealing with a security event, that's a big non-starter right there. You need to respond very quickly to this. And by using this uh, automated policy feature, you're able to publish those indicators to your devices without any downtime whatsoever, without a policy push. There's no need to uh, go and get management sign off or wait for a maintenance window. Uh, these products were designed to ingest this data uh, on the fly. And so you can make use of that. Uh, we do have exclusion capabilities so that, you know, if you do have a device, maybe you've got a computer that you're going to do a uh, pen testing from. You can put its IP address in there. Uh, if you're making use of a third-party service that likes to send, uh, you know, sample phishing emails to your users and see uh, who falls for it, you can put in that email address that it's going to come from so that this isn't cluttered up with uh, false positives. We have notification capabilities in here so that uh, you don't have to keep this dashboard open. If a new incident of a certain uh, uh, priority is created. You can have it go to you on email. It can go to a distribution list. We also support Slack and Microsoft Teams. We have our uh, audit capabilities in here. So anything, you know, this is essentially your audit log. And then here you can see uh, on this uh, uh, tenant portal, uh, we do have uh, Microsoft Defender uh, enabled for it. But let's see if I can get the threat hunting uh, up one more time. Uh, I'm not sure what's wrong there other than uh, uh, Murphy's Law whenever it comes to live demonstrations. That always seems to happen uh, at least once. 
but uh, I'm going to go back here to the overview. Uh, I'll open this up for questions. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, you're showing the uh, priority of the incidents. What determines the priority? Uh, that's determined by uh, a number of factors, all of it controlled by Threat Cloud. So we're looking at our confidence in the indicators that we have seen. Uh, you know, are we seeing a number of anomalies tied together? Uh, initially, whenever the product starts off, you're going to have a baseline uh, con uh, configuration. But over time, uh, this product gets to know your environment better uh, so that, you know, things that just seem anomalous, you know, can trigger an alert. Like, you know, if after a few weeks it notices that Chris is logging into a uh, BitTorrent uh, server in Russia uh, at three o'clock in the morning, uh, there are several anomalous problems with that example. Uh, that would trigger an alert because, you know, I should be home and in bed, uh, BitTorrent, how did I get out there? We've got a policy against that and we don't do anything with Russia. Uh, something's not right here. Uh, so based upon what we're seeing, the number of, um, you know, actual elements that we are seeing with this, all of that comes into play whenever it's determining the severity uh, for that incident. Okay. Um, and speaking of incidents, uh, how about alerting on events, even if it's, you know, remediated? Is that customizable? Can you just get it on certain confidence or severity levels? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's back here in the policy. Uh, if we go down here to notifications, now I don't have admin privileges on this dashboard, but you can uh, adjust this drop down here that says, you know, uh, if there's a uh, uh, severity score of medium or above, you can set it to that and anything matching that, you'll get a uh, an email, you'll get a text message, whatever you've done. Again, it supports uh, Slack and Teams too. All right. Um... What's the difference between this and an MDR? Are they compatible or are they, you need one uh, or the other? Uh, it's a good question. Um, so really what we're after here with this product uh, mostly is we're uh, aiming this at those customers that do have somebody on staff that wears uh, that investigator hat, that analyst hat. Uh, you know, there are uh, larger customers that have their own full-blown SOC team and this can be very useful to them. Uh, particularly as a first product in their tool uh, kit, uh, being able to perform uh, those investigations. Uh, but even some of our smallest customers, uh, this is great because someone usually on staff has to wear that hat, either formally or informally. Uh, you know, you might have a small IT department that's got, you know, three or four people in it. Somebody is going to get the tap on the shoulder if the antivirus on the machine uh, triggers. They're going to have to look into it. And this can help that person, especially if they are not a seasoned analyst, if, they, if they've got minimal exposure to cybersecurity uh, tools, this can really help them. Now, this contrasts from those customers that uh, usually opt for MDR, you know, managed detection and response. Uh, that's where, you know, a customer says, you know what, I don't want to hire anybody more, or I just want to outsource this function checkpoint here, you take care of it. And we do offer that service. I will say that I have a number of customers that have opted for both, where they want checkpoint to be that, uh, that first response, they want checkpoint to monitor everything, but they still want to be able to perform investigations as things crop up. And so this is uh, very much a tool that even MDR customers can make use of. Uh, it's a great tool to keep in the uh, the sack of tools. Great. Uh, I think you got one more here. Please jump in the Q and A if you have anything else. Um, you mentioned third party integration. You know, you know, ingest data from third parties, and is there a list of who we can accept data from? Uh, the first two that uh, R and D have made public are uh, Windows Defender and um, Azure AD. Uh, we should have. Uh, uh, certainly a uh, Windows Defender uh, support here before the end of the quarter, so within the next couple of weeks, and Azure AD should be right on its heels. Beyond that, uh, they have not released a list uh, or prioritization of the third-party products, but I am told that it will include a number of uh, 
uh, other vendor products, competitor products, whatever. Uh, we know that, you know, as much as we would like everybody out there to be uh, checkpoint centric, uh, not everyone is. And so we don't want this to be a tool that they can't use. Uh, we want everybody to be able to make use of this tool. Right, right. And uh, yeah, if, you know, you happen to be using this product and there is something you would like to be included, just let let your account team know, let me know, Chris, uh, we'll put you on the list, correct? Okay, uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Uh, yep, I just saw those. Got, uh, what's the name of the managed service you offer? It's uh, uh, Horizon MDR, MPR. Um, you know, contact your checkpoint representative. We can uh, put you in touch with uh, uh, that team uh, to talk about that product. And then we have uh, specific endpoint and user information like type of device, OS, user group membership. Does this kind of info make it uh, to the portal? Yes, if you are using checkpoint uh, endpoint security, that information and more is harvested from uh, the endpoint and sent up to the cloud. Um, I don't know what the level of uh, information ingestion is with third-party products such as Windows Defender. Uh, that one hasn't been made clear yet, but certainly if you are using uh, checkpoints, uh, uh, Harmony endpoint security, uh, all of that information is uploaded so that you're not having to, again, go to a lot of different places to pull up this information, all of which would uh, eat up valuable time when responding to a legitimate threat. Okay, I think that covers it for questions, Chris. Thank you very much for the info. Sure. Um, uh, wait, is there one more? Oh, no, you're clearing them out. Yeah. Um, let's see. We'll send the follow-up email with any reference content in the recording link of this session. Um, our next webinar will be in two weeks. That is on DNS security. Uh, sorry, my screen moved. Yeah, that will be on DNS security. You'll see the invitation for that soon. Uh, with that, we'll let you go. Thanks again for joining. We'll see you here next time. Thanks again, Chris. Everyone, enjoy your day. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye now.